some woman sees a guy in the locker room and yeah. in the women's locker room shaving his legs and there's like a little kid in there too like a young girl in there <laughs> and she takes a picture and shows it to the the people who you know run the mm -hmm. fitness and they revoke her membership for because you're not allowed to take pictures in the locker room right people. nevertheless <laughs> is right there's a tranny in the in but, the bathroom yeah. but I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to the Dave Palumbo podcast. I'm joined as always by Lee Priest. John Romano's going to be here in a few minutes. And I hear we might even be graced with the presence of Jimmy the Bull. And I know you guys have a confessional to do later today, right? Yes, yes. And um, I just want you to know this show is going to be a bloodbath. A bloodbath. Now, if I've ever seen any more stupid reporting in my life than <laughs> taking something out of context with Trump and that. Oh, by the way, did you see? He's $18 million, you know, I think like the Google two acres down there with no, nothing on it. He's like in the hundreds of millions, but his place that was worth 18 million by the judge. Now they want to seize it. They're saying it's like 400 and something million dollars worth. Yeah. You know, uh, Mira Lago is yeah, estimated to be worth 18 million. I think it's yeah. like a couple hundred acres. And it's like, they said it's like 5 million per acre and that's the undeveloped land. It's 18 it. acres. Oh, it's 18 yes. acres. So then they evaluated it like five million per acre or something like that. Five million yeah. per acre, yeah. It, it gets, the actual value is close to a billion dollars. Yeah, that's and the crazy. judge said it was worth eighteen, but now they want to seize it. <laughs> They've really up the up the how much it's yeah. worth. Yeah, yeah right. they, the estimate on the seizing is a way higher than the estimate they did when they when they originally evaluated. It. You know what's disgusting is is maybe that, the three uh, of us could chip in and buy Merlago for exactly. eighteen million, John. What, what's disgusting though is you've got these liberal pundit news talking mm -hmm. head pieces of shit that you know are saying things like oh i can't i can't wait to see the chains on trump tower and i i'm yeah. salivating yeah. every time i pass 40 wall street or you know all of his buildings are like they're, they're, mm. they're, there's like a gleeful you know satisfaction <laughs> that these people are you know absolutely destroying an innocent guy right yeah. We're just saying how it's going to be a bloodbath, John. A bloodbath. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're going to we're going to cancel you, John, Lee, for saying that. No, what's more relevant to our industry, which is really annoying the crap out of me, is did you see that that story about Planet Fitness? Yes, we yes. hate Planet Fitness anyway, but because they don't let bodybuilders in. But you know what? There's they some woman sees a guy in the locker room, and yeah. in the women's locker room shaving his legs and there's like a little kid in there too like a young girl in there and she takes a picture and shows it to the the people who you know run the mm -hmm. fitness and they revoke her membership for because you're not allowed to take pictures in the locker room right people. nevertheless is <laughs> right there's a tranny in the in but, the bathroom yeah, but, <laughs> yeah right with a little girl there right when right you, judgment, you judgment out, free probably. judgment free zone people judgment yeah, free yeah. <laughs> so so what's even better is the the, the planet fitness stock plunged plummeted Yep, plummeted. I love it. Oh, uh, that means that means no pizza this week. That's yeah, right. right. Go woke, go broke. As the woman, the, well, the, that was the, like. Remember that was like Riley Gaines when they all complained about Leah Thompson in there naked, and the girls were right. told they need to go get counseling and acceptance guidance. Yeah, but this, he, this guy wasn't even dressed as a woman. He just said he related <laughs> to being a woman. <laughs> What a bunch of the stock, sick the stock was at a high of sixty six dollars and ninety two cents on March seventh. It plummeted to a low of fifty six dollars and forty six. That's a big loss. That's over ten, 10, bucks, ten bucks. Is in them. That, that uh, you, you need. It should have gone down to like fifteen bucks. Is what it should have gone down to. 
The, this place should be burned to the ground. I'll tell you why. Because you know what? They're a judgment-free zone. That's what they call themselves. Yeah, but it's and a total, the hypocr biggest total judges. hypocrisy. Yeah, it, it's, it's the greatest hypocrisy of all time. I don't yeah. know why people don't see it. it, it they they totally, as soon as you walk in, there's a giant mural of a bodybuilder right. with, a, with a tank top with a circle with a line through it. Sounds I like mean, a judgment to me, right? It's, it's, it, it's total judgment. I mean, right there, as soon as you it's, walk it's in. All, it's an all judgment zone. That's right. all it is. We used, total we used judgment to have zone. fitness here. We used to have planets fitness here, but they changed the earth now, U-R-T-H. And there's one up near my mate's place. I thought, I'll go join just for a change. I go in, the guy in there's like, oh, hey, Lee, come and get some order things down. And as we're signing it, I don't know how. They must have cameras. He gets the call. He goes over, takes a phone call, comes back, goes, Lee, the owner's just called. We can't have you here as a member. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> really? Like, what? I can't train here. Yeah, so they tore up my thing I was filling out and they left. And that was Planet, Fit, uh, Planet Fitness there? Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And you, hadn't even grunt, and you hadn't done one grunt yet. I was just filling out the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lee, you know, you're on, the, you're on the most wanted list of every fucking major establishment. They must, sure. they How must can they, maybe someone called up there and goes, hey, Lee, free to be That seems like a judgment right there, John, doesn't oh, it? Oh, my God. They threw him out before he was even in. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He hadn't made one grunting sound yet, John. No. I was filling out the form. <laughs> now, That's I mean, insane. look, you know, there are men who you would never even know are, are women. They're transgender, mm -hmm. you know. And you know what? I don't necessarily have a problem if they're going to be appropriate in a locker room. And they want to, you know, change in a woman's mm -hmm. locker room. They look like a woman. They're not hang they're letting their schlong hang out. But when I see a guy with a beard in, in a woman's <laughs> locker room, mm -hmm. and I know that you know young girls are in there, I have a problem with that. I'm sorry, you know. I, exactly. I, I, I mean, is there something wrong with me? I, well, I don't know how you'd end up. It, yes, if you're seeing a man in a women's locker room, yes, there's something wrong with you. No, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> how are you getting in the women's that? locker room to see him? <laughs> No, but I'm saying, imagine your daughter is in there, and you got He's some in the <laughs> some hairy some hairy guy. You know, if, if my daughter came running out of the locker room and said, "There's a guy with a beard in there," I'd go in and drag him out by the beard. Drag him out by his cock. <laughs> well, that's that's your mo. I knew hey, that. Hey, hey, this, should, this shouldn't hurt you because well, I'll send Lee in there with a shoelace. Yeah, <laughs> Valentino said it best. That guy, you know, the the, the swimmer guy, Leah Thomas. Mm -hmm. Or girl, whatever you want to call. It. Yeah. He he used to purposely expose himself to those women too. It was like almost like a like a. Is that like an advantage fetish. too when he's swimming? Is that like drugs are an advantage? Is that like an advantage for him because he has a rudder? <laughs> <laughs> Does yeah? I think he tucks the rudder right. It's like it's like when Australia beat the America in the America's Cup, we had that wing keel, <laughs> that special wing keel under the boat. <laughs> Actually, that adds drag. They do that in. Oh. Drag. <laughs> yeah. What, what does he do with it? Because he has to wear a women's suit. What does he do with the with no, his? He uh, just packs it in there and lets. I guess he has to hope he doesn't get a boner or something totally like that. Evident. She's, she what if like, he gets a boner or something like that? You know. Well, apparently he's not supposed to. <laughs> but you know, there was there was a, a, a parody on Facebook where you know Leah Thomas had to give back her medals. You know, yeah, I thought it was real. I know it was fake, but. There was another one that I don't know if it's fake or not. Is that oh. she that T Leah Thomas has been trying to get on an Olympic team, and no one will take her. So <laughs> good. I, I I don't know if that's true or not. But if that was true, that's better than having to give your medals back if, mm. if she can't get on a team. That's awesome. Well, she should just retire at this point. I mean, you know, I'm sure John. Have you seen? I just telling Dave, it's pretty good. My wife enjoyed it. The new Roadhouse movie with no, I have not. Jake Gyllenhaal, he's in great shape for it. But then there's another movie you probably want to see. It's been rated really low. If you watch the preview, watch the preview for it. It's called Magical Negroes. Have you seen it? No. What is it about? To totally anti-white. It's all about Oh, so really? <laughs> Where do you find these movies? You must have so much time on your hands. <laughs> you know? No, I watched it on Officer Tatum and that they played the preview for it. Uh... Now it's been released. It's bombed. I mean, it's bombed at the yeah. point. Pull it up. See if you can find the preview for Magical Negroes. It's like you talk about <laughs> you talk fine. about stereotyping white people and the whites are bad. Isn't it? That's like oh, unbelievable. Like, I, I can't see why. The title sounds interesting, though. You know what I mean? But even the black people didn't go support it. No. <laughs> oh, and it's got a couple of um. What's that guy's name? 
someone greed a black actor. You know him if you saw him. He's got a beard. Um, yeah. A, a lot, a lot of the shit the blacks aren't tolerating anyway. You see it all the time. The... Yeah, that one there. Oh, beautiful movie. <laughs> Kobe Libby's satire. American Society of Magical Negroes has been causing it's tons of... It'd be like a comedy type thing. It'd be like if we brought back Blazing Saddles. They probably wouldn't like it. <laughs> oh, that's David Allen Greer. Oh, I didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I thought he looked familiar. Okay. Mm. Yeah, he's a good at Blazing Saddles. How about... Have you guys seen this... The the um the spat between... Well, not a spat. The issue that brewed between Don Lemon and Elon Musk? I did. Yeah. I watched yeah. it on Patrick <laughs> McDavid. was absolutely hysterical. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, didn't he, what did he ask for? He wanted to work for Elon. He wanted, he wanted, bear in mind, anybody can post on X. So it's not right. like, you know, yeah. you, right. So he wants Elon to pay him for putting right. his show on. He wanted, <laughs> right. he wanted a $5 million advance. He wanted eight or $10 million in salary. He wanted a pers- an equity stake in X. He wanted, to be, <laughs> he wanted to ride on the rocket to do the first um, podcast from from Mars, and and he wanted a free cyber truck. Hey, yeah. I would I would I would have given him the ride on the rocket and then left. Him and there. and this is while he's calling you would have taken the cyber truck. Elon Musk a racist and a homophobe. <laughs> yeah, and, they, and then he interviewed him right after that. Right, right. it was a terrible interview. It was, terrible it was, interview. Does he, does he forget he's got a white husband or what? He does. Yeah, I mean, he, he he seems to forget he's a lot of things. <laughs> you know what? It, it, it wasn't a bad interview in the sense that I'm, Elon is very good at dealing with people like him. Mm-hmm. And Elon handled, I thought, the questions well. So it, it, it just basically showed him as being like a doofus, you know, I thought, you know. Well, it did, I, mean, I don't it, think anyone watched that interview and said, way to go, Don <laughs> Lemon, man. Oh, no, the yeah. ladies of The View did. They're going to oh. have them all. Oh, yeah, but that, yeah. Now. They're fucking... They're more demented than. What did you Ryan see who they had? They had uh, what's her name, Blaze Ford, the, the the one who testified against Kavanaugh, who made up that whole story about oh, yeah, her yeah. getting raped at a party that she couldn't uh, remember right. where it was, when it was, right, how she right. got there, how she got back, who was there, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. There's no evidence whatsoever. Right. Who's, the, um, who's the Hispanic lady on there too that was going on about the bloodbath? If Trump gets in, he's going to go and kill everyone and do this. <laughs> <laughs> they're so nuts. The, le- oh. the left wing media is act is the things they're saying are insane. Mm. How how Trump is going to assassinate oh. people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just the most ridiculous, stupid shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm who's wondering, that, who's that guy with the glasses too? On scene, Mar- right? him, John Joe Scarborough. In the morning, is that the one that was oh. going bullshit, bullshit? He knows what right. he's saying. He's going to do a bloodbath. This is what he's going to do. If he doesn't get reelected. I'm like. Are you people out of touch? That's the guy who said you know what, that Trump was going to assassinate. Yeah, no, you know what? But people who are who are wrong in general in in society love to take out of con- stuff out of context. So they oh. so they're so they're technically accurate in the sense that they're reporting real news, but they're just taking it out of context. So you don't really know what the freak they're talking about. But then so they're that like, makes it fake. That's what he said. He literally said that. But guys. It, it, it was sarcastic, you know. I mean, yeah. you have to put things into context so they have no meaning, you know. As soon as you remove the context, you turn it into fake news. Mm. That's right. That, that's that's exactly. all we have. Did you see, did you see that exactly montage they put together of when all the people on the left, CNN, have used the word bloodbath in their speeches? Did they put a montage together and <laughs> when be a bloodbath? Is this going to be a bloodbath? That's a, that's an eighties an eighties term. I've heard my father but, but say that a million times. Too. But what Lee what Lee is talking about is that the media gets the talking point from the right. White House, the staff, mm-hmm. or whatever, and yeah. and then they prove that it's been been in, disseminated by the fact that they all say the same. They exact all the same yeah, every news station reports the same <laughs> exact verbiage. Yeah. What about, what about the crypt keeper Nancy Pelosi? Did you hear what Trump said? It's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to show you something. Mike, Mike O'Hearn posted this. This is this is really funny. It's worth it's worth me repo. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it's really funny. Hold on, put it up. Is here. he natty or not? I wonder. <laughs> I, I I love Mike O'Hearn. <laughs> I love he, how long has that been going on for? Bloody yeah, man. yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, he's natty. Yeah, it was all right. It was last call at the bar. The guy seemed desperate, man. He kept going and going. I was like, brother. I'm dry. <laughs> oh, shit. 
no more. Uh, I'm trying. I got to turn the music off. You're gonna ding us for that. <laughs> My turn. She's like, get. She's like, get back in, in, in the bedroom. <laughs> she's like, I don't know how he broke out of the ropes. I tied him up with. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that was great! Oh <laughs> I've got one of his t-shirts with the "Baby Don't Hurt Me" on. <laughs> that was the, uh, the from the the song from what's it called? Uh, what was the, the night at the Roxbury? You remember that? Yeah, we're in the car. Was that a different one? In the car? <laughs> That's the one. Mm. The head, 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 Bob. Head Bob. Mm. Then he hit his head and smashed the window. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I when I first saw that movie, Night at Roxbury, I thought it was the stupidest movie. And then the more I watched it, it was great. It was so brilliant, that movie. Uh -huh. It was so funny. If you I'll just tell him, Dave, John, too, they had the Footloose's 40th anniversaries coming up in the school where they filmed it. All the kids got together in that auditorium and they did the dance from Footloose and they want – Kevin Bacon to come to the school dance for the 40th anniversary of Footloose. So we're hoping, hoping he turns up. I think he will. <laughs> Why would he? That'd be great. I would, yeah, he should show up. Why not? If he can still, if he can still move. You know. Actually, he did the dance not long ago. Was on, I did he, he do it on the night, Guardians of the Galaxy? No, no, he did it on, Um, he just did it in a barn. He got his barn on his property. And I think it must have been like a couple of months ago he did it in his barn there doing the dance. I thought they made him do it in the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. Didn't you remember they kidnapped Kevin Bacon? Mm -hmm. I never watched all that one, the Christmas special. Oh, you should watch, yeah, they, they kidnap Kevin Bacon and they take him back. Ah. They, they think that uh, what's his name wanted it is like you know the the, the, the uh, what's his the main guy wanted it for his birthday present because he was obsessed with Kevin Bacon from Footloose. So they they actually kidnap Kevin Bacon and bring him back. <laughs> Is that like on Ted when they wanted what's his name sperm? <laughs> that was a funny show, wasn't it? Ted Ted Two. Yeah, I, I didn't see Ted Two actually. I heard it was good. I heard you're actually making a TV series of Ted now. Are they really? Wow. Mm. I remember Flash Gordon was on Ted. <laughs> well, that's right. You're right. Yeah. Mm. I got a Ted poster. I got a mm. Ted poster signed by him when he came to Australia for my wife because she loves. Ted, so he signed the poster for her. That was nice of him. Yeah. yeah. He's actually um good friends with Lou Ferrigno and that, so I had a good chat to him and stuff. Who's who's friends with him? Uh, what's his name? Sam, the actor that played Flash Gordon. No. Oh, 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 I didn't know that. What's his name? We Sam. go to Comic-Con together. Yeah, oh, I can't remember his name. Now Sam something. <laughs> Blank. Turning into Biden. Did Sam, you guys, are, you guys Sam, huh? are you guys following this whole Milos thing with um, oh, uh, Samson? Samson's out of yeah. What do you think about it? Oh. Uh, well, I haven't been following it, so you're going to have to bring me up to speed. Lee, tell, tell the story so that John knows what's going on. Well, after the Arnold Classic, they just decide to part ways. And I don't think um, Milos got much communication, so nobody knew what was going on. But he, he got decided a text, to, I think. Yeah. Yeah, his he wife. What? He Samson left, must have texted him or something yeah, like okay. that. But uh, his wife got him ready for the last show. So now people are speculating, did his wife help him all the time? Because his wife used to prepare him before he went to Milos and that. So, And then they're saying his last showing, he looked his best. So his wife got him in the best shape ever. And But then, it, then he posted up a thing thanking Milos because Milos said he was like family. But then Samson says, you're a great friend and that. So I think, you know, it's just people speculating on stuff and, well, Milos was him. the one who was upset about it, I thought, yeah, right? Yeah, reading, reading into stuff and that. So it's like, it's just, you know, the internet. <laughs> well, Dave, who do you, who do, if you were, excluding yourself, yeah. if you were to pick somebody to work with Samson, who who would you be? Not Aceto, just by the Yeah, I would say Chris Aceto. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'd say Aceto or Neil Hill, maybe. Yeah, I think Chris is good because Chris can, ha, kind of has those the, those type of physiques figured out. I mean, he's really good with Andrew Jack. He's really good with he was good with Rodin. You know, mm. those like tall, long, you know, good muscle bellies, but one of those metabolisms that's a little tough to, to crack. Chris is pretty good with that. You that's know? true. But you know, I, I think that you know, just I just want to say one thing. I think the onus of responsibility for an athlete, if he's working with, with someone, I mean, Milos put a lot of time into him, whether mm -hmm. you believe Milos helped him or didn't help him, 
there's no doubt that the guy put a lot of size on when he was working with Milos. Uh, he at least I think owes him the you know a phone call, don't you? If he's mm -hmm. end it rather than like a text message. I know it's an awkward thing to have to try to say, hey, you know what? I don't want to use you as a coach. I have people call me, you know, sometimes and they tell me, you know, I'm going to try something. I said, don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel uncomfortable. It, It's not going to change my friendship with you. Mm -hmm. You got to do it. If it doesn't work out, you come back. That's all. It's just business. That's all. And same thing with, I mean, Samson and Emilio should still be friends. There's no, there should be no reason why they're not going to be friends. You know, if they just – they're trying, he's going to try something different. Maybe it didn't work out. You know, sometimes the, the, the strategy that a certain coach uses doesn't work with that particular athlete. So I think if Samson would have called Milos or even talked to him in person, I think that that would have probably Milos would have been fine with that. Cause he's, he's yeah. very, I don't see Milos as one of these people that gets upset about <laughs> many things. You know? yeah. I don't think people actually call anyone anyway. Do they even on birthdays? How many phone calls? Are you no, guys? no one calls each other. Happy which birthday. Is, yeah, but you birthday. know what Lee's wrong. It's wrong with that. It's because you cannot, convey tone, inflection, mm -hmm. emotionality in text yeah. messages. As much as you try, you can't do it and it gets no. missed. So if you call up and you're emotional with someone, you can't convey that in a text. It kind of comes off as cold in a text. Remember how times had changed? You remember when you were little and you'd almost get into a fight with your siblings when the phone rang? You were like, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. You push them out the way, run and get the phone, hello. And now, now when the phone rings, you go, Oh, that prick! Not not answering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you could text him now. That's why you could avoid him. It was so much fun. Now you can see who it is. You're like, no. Nah. Because it was hard to talk to people like in the 1980s and 90s. Yeah, you know, once cell phones came around, forget about it. Now it, it, it's once crazy. caller ID come in, it was like, nah. I, I could talk to you in Australia way too much. You know, it's, you're too close to me. Actually, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see that you know terminating that relationship by text could have been seen right as mm. you know callous or shallow or short or whatever. Mm. However, I am of the opinion that this relationship between the coach, guru, whatever you want to call him, yeah. and the client has gotten too out of hand. And in what sense? Know, what's that? In what sense? In in, in that they're too dependent. It's what the, 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 the uh, not, not everybody, but there are certain people, top pros in this business, who are absolutely, completely, totally dependent on their coach. So what? And What's wrong with I, that? I just think it's wrong. I think being a bodybuilder requires that you be good at all of it. So th that includes the diet, the management, the anxiety, the, the nervousness, the everything. Everything that goes into getting out on stage is your responsibility. The coach is, is should only just be a second set of eyes and a, a yep. sounding board. What do you think if I do this? What do you think if I do that? Do you have a recommendation for this? Not this. I gotta wait and tell him if I if I mm -hmm. start walking with my left foot first or my right foot first. Coach, what do I do? That's which the is point true. we're at which, right which now. Which is true because look at how you know. Sadly, Chris had to leave the island because of his mother's passing, and some of these people that were there competing, they probably went. Oh my God! What do I do? Chris isn't here for the last few days. What am I going to do? It's like right. Well, but yeah, but Chris can still Chris can still you know, communicate with them via text. I know, but they still need to the, figure the, it out for themselves. The, yeah. the, the dependency is the point. I yeah, but John, that. some people are more dependent than other people, and and that's just and, human and, nature. And I'm taking issue with that. I think it's wrong. I think it is well, an absolute. I think it's a weakness. I think it takes away from the, ab, the the totality of what it takes to be a bodybuilder and be competitive and be successful. To do all of it, it's like it's like I'm a successful businessman, but you know I have to I have to you know my I I have to run my my COO is the boss because I got to ask him before I do anything else. It's that's not how it works. Yeah, you're the works. boss. You're the boss. You do what the boss. Right, does. but you know there's some people out there though that that are very independent minded and they just need information, which that's is not. I, I agree. Right, no, no, there. Okay. Then there are people. Then there are people that are very emotionally and psychologically weak, and for them. Having someone there to, to answer all their questions and be, hold their hand is important, or they would never make it to stage. And it doesn't, I don't think it makes them a bad person. It just makes them aware of their personality and, and what and they need. Is, and this is why, if you're a coach, never train fitness or bikini girls and stuff, because <laughs> I just think it's codified. No, because, like, look, uh, let's take Lee, for instance. Lee is a very yeah. independent minded guy. He, he doesn't really listened. need it. He doesn't need anyone. All he really needs is someone to, to look at him so that 
he doesn't do anything stupid like you know and and and, and do too much of something. Whereas another, I know guys that want to know, you know, what time they should go to the bathroom, you know, and I'm like, how about when you have to, you know, but those people need, like to document everything. Guy Sister Nina would document everything in his, and that it worked for him because his speaking, conditioning speaking was great. Guy, speaking a guy, happy birthday, guy. His birthday's on the 22nd. Oh, happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, guys. And he's gym opening on the 23rd tomorrow, so. Wow, nice. What, uh, how old is he now? I don't know how old he's got. Is he, is he in his 40s now? Oh, he's definitely in his 40s, yeah. Got to be young 40s, though, I would think. Yeah. 40, 42, 43, maybe? I don't yeah. remember how much older I was than him. Um, I'm trying to think. No, it's his birthday. He's probably like 45. He might be 45. So if, if you're in the Bethlehem area up there, go, go to his gym opening. Going to be a big day. A lot of people. Is that where it is in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania? Or? Yeah. So why did they open all the way in Bethlehem? I don't know. Just said it's a nice area. It's a nice gym. It's all that military green and black. Yeah, and no, stuff. no, it's really nice. You you can go there, Lee, because you know they have a great racetrack there. All the Andretti, hey. the, the Andretti family lives there. You know, uh, you know, you know where I am going to go. I'll probably get hate mail for it in my things, but they just said they're doing the visa for me now. So May seventeenth to the twentieth, I'm going to be in Russia doing a seminar. Wow. Oh. They'll be like, Lee's in Russia. He's supporting Russia. I'm like, I'm going for the bodybuilding. I heard that you're going to, to report, I mean, to interview Putin Putin for uh, yeah, RX. Oh, no, no, he's going to train. train Putin. Yeah, going to train Putin's Putin. a badass, you know. He's got a, he's got a fight with a I bear coming up. See if you can get me a press pass there I, I, and, and a visa because I'm going to come I'm going to come with you. And, but, you know, yeah, people yeah, like, they'll be like, I can't believe you're going there to Russia. It's like, I'm going it's for the bodybuilding thing. That's why I hated when this thing started and you had the world soccer thing on and they wouldn't let the Russian team go. It's like, why punish the people who right. they got nothing to do with the war? They're just athletes who want to travel and do their chosen sport. It's ridiculous. Yep. Speaking of coaches, guys, um, George Farrah called me earlier today yeah. and he's got <laughs> a new King Kamali. Now he's got a, he's got a new documentary coming out called the guru. Oh. And oh. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be released, I guess on Amazon or something. I don't know, but he's, uh, He's gonna come on the show and talk to me about it and talk about you know his survival. You know he beat cancer. You know that right? He had some kind of Kate colon Middleton, cancer. Kate Middleton has cancer now. Yeah, well, did, she should hire George to help cure it because George cured his cancer. So well, when I see the guru, why do I feel like that's a good name for a Bollywood movie? <laughs> he, uh, you know, George um, is a PhD now. He told me. Is, you know, so, so which happened first? Was he a cop and then got shot? And then I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask. PhD I'm gonna go over the. I'm gonna go over the timeline with him, John. I promise yeah. you. Who, who, who did the documentary? He said during COVID, he told me because I was talking to him at the Arnold. He said during COVID, he he studied in the and those two years, 120 hours a week, he studied and he became a um a, he got a PhD. 120 in, hours a week. Yes. Yeah. Is that possible? 120 hours a week. That's what he told me. So day and day and night. Day 24 hours a day. <laughs> now, Anthony uh, Lolly is the one who's produced or wrote the whole thing and produced the whole thing. I don't know if you know him. He, I've had him on my show. He lost, He was a businessman. He made a ton of money, and then he was severely overweight, and um, he lost all this weight, and he got involved in the fitness industry. And he uh, his his documentary, if you if you want to watch it, I think it was number one on Amazon for a while. Yeah. Now everyone's waiting for the Lee Priest documentary to come out. That's the new one. That's you know, your your guy wants to do one on me. He said he wants to come ah, do one on me. Good. Yeah. So he's very good, Gary. He does, like I said, that Cormier one was probably one of the best ones. Put oh, together. I love the Cormier one. I don't even know where he got some of that footage from. That was the greatest yeah. find of anything. He goes, he goes and gets all the footage of everyone places here and there. And Cormier told me he goes, Dave. He goes, I don't even, I didn't even know some of that footage existed. It was like he found <laughs> it. Like he found people with like cell phone footage of of. of <laughs> Chris in like hotel rooms and at clubs. <laughs> I, it was the we, greatest. We that one. <laughs> yeah, it was the greatest find of all time. I don't know where yeah. he got the stuff from. Have you I'm seen? A bit that? Worried. I'm, I'm a bit worried in my documentary. I might flick to a scene of a coffee table and a shoe. Yeah, he had that footage. <laughs> how'd, that how'd, you how'd you get that? Well, you, you know that that's footage? coming. They're going to CG <laughs> that in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they might. Right, they might do a reenactment on that. Oh one, yeah. Right? <laughs> Who can play Lee though? That's the only thing, you know. But I, I got news for you. This this CG and AI is getting so good. I oh, know. It, I mean, it, it daily it it improves. It's it's yeah. really we're getting to a point now where. 
you're going to see a commercial on TV or on, on, the, on, on the web of whomever talking and you're not going to, and it, it's not mm -hmm. going to be them and you're not going to know it. I, I think we're already at that point. We are. I, there's one of me, there's one of Joe Rogan and saying that I'm going to be on his next show talking about, um, a, a, you know, erectile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Who made that? I don't know, but it's like, Joe, it's like, it, it, you watch his lips. He's saying my name. It's like, wow. It's, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to get Jimmy the Bull to join us. Well someone, well, someone said that about the Kate Middleton, where she's sitting there talking about the cancer. People are like she's already dead, blah blah blah. And I think that the people were saying that because they were uh, there was all the conspiracy theorists were were going crazy on that whole uh, Kate Middleton. The they were saying she was, she was dead, and they were doing like CGI on her. You know, it's 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 kind of sad that, that we're such a society of people that love to see misery. I mean, I mean, just respect the family. I mean, you might not like the royals or whatever. You might mm -hmm. like them. But you know what? When people are sick and you find it out, lay off. That should be there. As soon call the dogs off. As soon as you find out the woman's got cancer, we should be supporting her. We shouldn't be like like trying to you find know, some douchebag said douchebag liberal media asshole said uh, no. Baron Trump just turned eighteen. He's fair game. What? Well, That's I didn't hear, what, what was that? I saw a thing on I saw a thing on YouTube where it had him and his dad going into the plane, but I didn't see what they what they talking crap about Baron now, were they? Or? That's the new thing now that you know. Since Baron's uh, eighteen, they can start attacking him. Dave, I sent you that clip of oh, okay. Rogan. I, what about him. what about when they bring in? You know, he got Hunter, who's done God knows what. That's the man to the hunter. But yeah. they're like the media, the CNN media is like, you shouldn't go after a person's family. But how many times has Trump's family been brought into the judicial committee and shit like that? <laughs> Don Jr. had five different congressional grillings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You no. Know? What about Hunter? He turns up and then just walks out of them. You're right. That is a mistake. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 well, he says he wants to do it, and then they invite him, and then he doesn't show up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the ones he did show up to, as soon as he goes to get questioned by was it Marjorie Green, and he just gets up and walks out, and it's like. So, so, so I have a question now. At, at the rate that robotics, AI, CG is mm -hmm. all, you know, advancing, are we going to get to a point where you can make a duplicate of yourself? Complete robotic duplicate of yourself, AI generated speech, intellect, the whole thing, and have that person go to prison for you. You could commit a crime, yeah. get, you know, do the whole thing, and then you, you got your AI computer robot surrogate that's going to go do the trial and do the time for you. Well, the D I think DNA would prove otherwise, don't you think? Yeah, who know, what, I reckon. They probably, they'll probably make DNA test, testing unconstitutional. Yeah, <laughs> probably that's racist. That's racist. Oh that's the one and that's only racist. John Romano, and we'll be talking about. Oh. Well, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow on my show, I'll have to. Hold on, I got, I got. I'm loading up that thing, John. Hold on. It's hysterical. I mean, it looks right. like him doing it. <laughs> oh, and that's some idiot go. playing with their iPhone. I mean, it's like you know, imagine with a real, you know, super high end computer and. Hey, ready? Right. Well, tomorrow on my show, I'll have the one and only John Romano, and we'll be talking about male enhancement. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. That's pretty good, John. That's I gotta awesome. Tell you. That, I mean, yeah. that's. I mean, and, Sorry, uh, what I'm saying is the the primitive. Well, tomorrow on my show, I'll have the one and only John Romano, and we'll be talking about male enhancement. <laughs> <laughs> and we are at the absolute infancy of this. Can you? I, I know. Mean, I'm telling you, ten years from now, twenty years from now, fifty yeah. years from now. Combined with robotics, we are going to have this, the Android, you know, Star Trek, what was his name? Right. Data. The guy Data. Data. If I can only clone that. myself a couple times, John, I would get a lot more work done, that's for sure. By then, by then it's going to be Skynet. But deep, I always think, you know, when they cloned, was it Dolly the Sheep? How, how long ago was that? Yeah. You can't tell me that these people with billions of dollars don't have a scientist somewhere that they've paid off in a laboratory cloning themselves for body parts and shit. Well, no, you see, but Lee, the problem with the cloning issue is, is that when you clone someone, you're not getting the same person. You're just getting <coughs> DNA yeah, but, of the same person. Yeah, but person. say if you but cloned a the person, robot, and, like, say you, and you need a new liver, you could get it from your cloning. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, for sure. But I'm saying with robots, like what John is saying, you could actually put your mind into the robot, yeah. and it would actually be like you, essentially. Exactly. I mean, so, you know, live you. It's like that. You ever watch that Westworld on HBO? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was that's towards, what that was. Like. The end it got a bit confusing. I stopped watching. Yeah, it. The, the last season was terrible. But 
The but, great, the movie though, the movies with Yul Brenner in were great. The original. Oh, the original. Movie. But I'm just saying, I liked the first couple seasons. Yeah. Of the one that was on HBO was great because mm. you couldn't tell if they were <laughs> they were real or not. You didn't know who was a robot. You know. Ed it's Harris pretty, played a good. Ed Harris good in that the series. Ed Harris is great in that. Phenomenal. So. I think that that's, I, I could see that being the future more so than anything where people, they'll set up like, you know, like Disneyland with, with robots that you can, you know, like, like John would say, have sex with and you can shoot them and you can do whatever you want to them, you know, and uh, it'll just cost a, you know, a well, lot of money. Seen, well, have you seen some of those actual, when you look at, I don't know how I found them, but have you seen some of the latest sex robots that are worth $10,000 or more? No. Are they good? They almost look real. They speak. They look like real. <laughs> why don't you get a Why don't you get a sponsorship from one of those? And you can then you can have it in the room. I'll, if you I'll get it. I'll get it when they learn to vacuum and do the dishes and shit as well. As <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a movie that came out ages ago called Cherry 2000. I love that movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, and is that not prophetic? I mean, that is yes. exactly what Lee just talked about: yeah, yeah. is the super hot, do whatever you want, sex robot that vacuums and does the dishes too. <laughs> and, and when you don't, and when you don't feel like listening to her talk anymore, you just flip the standby switch and stick her in the closet. You know, <laughs> you don't have to deal with that shit. I mean. I know. When you tie when you tie the wife up and put the tape on her mouth, they don't really appreciate it right now. So we need. To <laughs> I mean, you want the one that's going to help you taper up. That's not you know, mm. and come with their own shoelaces. But isn't it funny though? How many times do you see movies that you know? In the, yeah, remember yeah, back it. in the day. Remember back in the day, Dick Tracy had to talk and do his watch. Everyone's like, ah, oh, how how far fetched a watch phone. But right. now, all the stuff we're seeing is already thinking. Even when they get ideas for this stuff back then, <laughs> someone's leaked it out from the government. They're already doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. Well, when we the self bomber come out, they had that for what, 22 years before they released they had it. So it makes you wonder what they have now. <laughs> true. Very true. I um, I think we have a lot of stuff coming in the future that's going to be yeah. blow our minds, really. Well, and then that's not, not, it's not only going to blow our minds, but it's going to have a really significant impact on society. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I've been saying this all along, and you guys mark my words. It may not happen in our lifetimes, but when when those sex robots get to the point where mm -hmm. they are a, a, an actual fungible, you know, alternative mm -hmm. for some people, you are going to see a shift in society like you've never oh. seen before. <laughs> I'm telling you. If, if, like, if, if the average dude can get his hands on whatever kind of girl he wants that's going to do whatever he wants, whenever he says, and do the dishes and the laundry and the shopping and the cooking, and right. what are regular human women going to do? Because <laughs> by, by comparison, they're just a fucking pain in the ass. So, what, You're what, right. What, what's going to happen? No one's going to buy Lamborghinis anymore, John. As long as the robot doesn't start arguing, we'll be okay. Yeah, no one will buy like like fancy. Well, there probably won't be fancy cars anymore anyway. Everything will be like you know, you know, Tran Uber right. like transportation. Yeah, the, the robot will give you a piggyback wherever you want to go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and the, the, the bodybuilding schmoes, John, can probably get muscular robots too, oh. right? Probably. Oh, the, yeah. No, just imagine. Imagine if you could. Program exactly what you want. Exactly. You know, these guys want to be lifted and carried, John. These guys. You can program it down to the minute detail, the color and length of her fingernails, everything, exactly how you want. And then you can program exactly her demeanor, how you want her to respond, what her you know vocabulary is going to be, her accent, right. everything. You can completely concoct this right. individual to be exactly what you want and do whatever you want yeah. at a well, very high why, level why john, john you know that lee, lee trades in his cars every six months what would lee do lee would have to constantly be getting a new when, one when, when that's john the beauty said, of it you john can trade said, them in you can remodel them you, you can, can lease them, them john even <laughs> I, love, I, thought, I, thought, I thought john was going to say the color and length of the clitoris he went no, that too like, <laughs> that every every single detail you'll be able to i think the lease will be a better option john this way you can every couple years trade them in you know yeah but see no but now the women listen to this oh yeah well 
well, we'll do the same thing. We'll get the guy robot. They we'll, will. They will. There's no use for him. There's a, you could have what, you could have what you, you, any dude would be programmable if you if you used your, played your cards right. I know. So, I know. We already, we already have, the population of, job of, will go to zero because no one will no one will have anymore. kids. Exactly. Speaking of Mike, speaking of cars, it's actually I got to pick it up. It got tuned up and caught for the big motor on it. That only had like a five fifty. Carby on it, so he put on a 770 carb. So, you know, which car, Lee? The Camaro. Ah, so what what motor do you have in it? 350 four, or is it a big got a four, 454. 454. That's a big block. Yeah, so and you only the, had a 500 CFM carburetor on it. Yeah, 550. So he's going. You need an 850 Holly double pump. Oh, don't that. tell him that, John. Now he's going to want to get another one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of, all, first of all, carbureted cars are that's a 60s muscle, 60s, yeah. 70s deal anyway. Yeah. And if you're if you, and Lee knows you got a big block Chevy engine, 454, mm -hmm. you need a big ass carburetor on that. Yeah, thing. that's a gas. But the one he put on it, sure. I did have a Holly, I did have a Holly on it, but he, I forgot what brand he put on it. Just, the Lee, what did it cost you to fill that tank up every like every day, other day? You filling that tank up? Okay, on the open road around town, when you give it a bit, it goes through the petrol. Yeah. It's, like, it's like nine. It's like nine miles to the gallon. Those cars. I've got the. I've had the exhaust put out the sides now. So cool. Really, uh -huh. It's funny. The cops always look at me. One pulled me over once because I just got the lap belt. So they think when they go past me, there's no belt coming over my shoulder. Like, uh, oh, okay. got him. He's not wearing his belt. That he looks in and goes, "Oh, you're okay." <laughs> <laughs> I had a so cop pull me over because he wanted to hear my bike. So yeah. it's legal to wear just a uh, just a, just the belt. Uh, seatbelt. As long as it's original, if it comes with the car and it's original, right. yeah. yeah. If, that, if it's original equipment, yep. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's the. That's why I've decided to have they pull me over. I'll be so like, hey, so if you're driving a kid, it's acceptable to throw your arm out and as as his seatbelt, as the kid's seatbelt, you know. That's reflex. What I'm talking about. When we would drive around. No one has seatbelts, so what it would yeah. happen is if you if you if your mother or your grandmother stepped on the, on the brake, she'd throw her arm out mm -hmm. immediately onto the windshield. You know? uh, what about what about if you're in the old cars and you had the big bench seat and you were the one that had to be stuck near the gear shifter? Oh yeah, in the, the middle. middle yeah, yeah, in the middle. It would come between your legs. You had to put your legs <laughs> to the side of it and hit your leg on the time when they're changing gears. That's right. That's right. Oh, oh, never you could sit in the back of the bench tray back in the old days. Well, we, the be the bench seat is hysterical though. When you got three dudes in the, in the, yeah. in the truck, <laughs> and the, again, the guy by the window goes down like this. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one knows what we're talking about, John. <laughs> yeah. All right, maybe well, you sit in the back of the old station wagons with the back window down. And you didn't think the fumes are coming. <laughs> What are the kids doing? Are they sleeping? There would be the 10 field? kids in the back of the station wagon. There was no yeah. seatbelts, nothing. We were all jammed. Remember, back. remember <laughs> when you were younger, you'd play corners. You wouldn't have your seatbelt. Every time your dad or mom went around a corner, you'd slide and squat. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and no one got hurt. Isn't it amazing? No. no. Well, cars no back got, then, you look at you know what? 68 Camaros filled out of all steel. You could hit I was going to say, those cars were like tanks. Yeah. Nothing even got dented when you would hit them. No, now you've got these cars, you just tap something and the bumper falls off. Well, they were like, back then, they were like bumper cars. They would hit into each other yeah. and they would bounce off each other because they were built like you know, know, bouncy. Yeah. When, I remember when I was on Lincoln bumps. Boulevard. I was on Lincoln Boulevard going to the gym once, and this woman ran into the back of the Hummer. I sort of went, mm. I got out. I looked at the Hummer's got that big metal steel thing on the back. Yeah. Her car's all squashed. You know, I went, well, I'm okay. Have a good day. And I just drove <laughs> off. <laughs> It's good. What were we gonna say, John? No, I remember when speed bumps first came out. Oh. They were they hadn't really engineered them correctly yet, and so <laughs> they had before they flattened them out and made them wider. Yeah. They were pretty, you know, like mm -hmm. it was like a pipe laying across the street. Yeah. <laughs> and they and they put them in my school, and the bus we didn't be in the bus, all right. And the front the guy would you know the bus driver would go over the front, you know, and then yeah. he'd start accelerating. And the school bus, there's like 25 <laughs> feet between the back front wheel and the back wheel, right? So by the time he gets to the back wheel, and we're all going like this, <laughs> he hits the bump, we go flying. Oh, you hit the ceiling, air. you hit the ceiling, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You imagine yeah. that today to parent oh, groups who would be going to get about fucking apes. Yeah. <laughs> they've still got a few of those steep speed bumps around here where they're not made out of the bitumen or they're made out of yeah. this hard plastic and they're really square and you hit them, it's like bang. 
<laughs> yeah, especially if you go fast over them. Yeah. Forget about it. <laughs> but yeah. all right, well, Jimmy didn't join us. His loss. I have to uh, wrap up now. Jimmy can't gotta do two shows. shows. He's got the confessions later. Jimmy's you, yeah, so you got yet. Yeah, Lee and, and Jimmy have the confession show later. You actually were monetized last week. I have to applaud mm -hmm. you for that. So you must. How have, much did oh, they make? I don't know. We, like, we pretty much bucks? get monetized a lot. It's just, and it's weird. The stuff we talk about, I'm surprised. <laughs> it, you never, you never know. Sometimes it just they they throw you a bone and they let you, they let them monetize that yeah. show. A lot Lee, of I want you guys to do an episode where you guys are are counseling a, a couple that's about to be married. Yeah. <laughs> you know how they go see the priest? They got to go yeah. see the priest first, right? <laughs> You should do normally, normally when people say they should do pre Cana like training, John. You ought, <laughs> you know what that is? you ought to hear some of the replies we give because someone was sending a confession like, Oh, I've been cheating on this and that, I can't really fall in love. That'd be like something again, I cheated. So this so then Jimmy and I we get these visions from God and we fill in the blanks and it all, always go back to their childhood where their father or uncle raped them, and then they sort of like the stories we just come out with. I'm thinking we're probably cause more people to commit suicide than we've had yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Anyway, all right. Well, we tell Tyler, once we get these visions, we just got to let them out and we just fill in the blanks because they're so they, traumatized. They're they, blocked they, out and they can't write it. So we have to help them. Uh, th thank God you guys have that show because there's a lot of people that, that would uh, would be killing themselves. Suicide. We're, doing right. We're doing God's work. We're doing God's work. You and John, John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, and you and Jimmy are all the, the, <laughs> on a mission from God. They're on a mission from note, God. I'm Dave Palumbo with John yep. Romano and Lee Priest for another edition of the Palumbo Podcast. We'll see you next week. See ya.